We are joined now by Husker Online, Sean Callahan. Sean, good morning. We, we've been talking about this game for a long time, but do you believe the lead-up to the Colorado game will rival the 2014 Miami game here in Lincoln? Oh, I mean, it's going to be bigger in the sense that Deion Sanders is going to be there. I mean, the 2014 Miami game didn't have near it, the television audience that this game is going to have. Um, you know, when, when you look at the NBC window, Deion Sanders, Shador Sanders, um, we saw what that rating was at 11 a.m., which was 10 a.m. in Boulder, nearly 9 million viewers a year ago. Um, so it really could be one of the largest um, you know, viewing audiences and stages Nebraska's played a game on in quite some time. Yeah, I don't know how to – I mean, it's May 15th, and we're talking about this a lot. It's got to subside at some point, right, Sean? <laughs> I mean, I just think people are excited. Um, the Big Ten – has you know long put their top games that are going to draw the best ratings at 11 a.m. Yeah, um, and, and you know they're Nebraska and Cotton. Nebraska's fortunate. Nebraska fans, I should say, are fortunate because Texas and Michigan is, is a game that will pull up better, probably as good or a better number to the winningest programs of all time matching up in a rare non-conference game after playing each other, you know after being in the college football playoff a year ago. So. Um, I mean, that's probably one of the if, – if that game isn't happening, then this game's probably a big noon kickoff game. But, um, you know, Deion Sanders in September especially, we know his ratings draw. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's there's a lot of excitement, I, I, I think, at all fronts because of, of the mystery of what Colorado is, and yep. the rivalry, the night game stage. Um, I got to expect we're going to see another one of those drone shows or mm-hmm. something special in the stadium that night. Drone show, yes. And then there's another Sanders that uh, came into our being that's interesting. David Sanders, no relation to the Deion Sanders family, but he is the number one offensive tackle in the country. He's out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And he was here this past weekend, Sean. And I don't know, what, what do you, how do you size this one up? The big man, oh, the, 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 go ahead, go ahead, Sean. In, in the history of the internet era of online rankings, he's the highest player that's taken an official visit to Nebraska. I mean, he's the number two overall player in the country. Um, so <laughs> it's an easy thing to say because I know they've never hosted a, on an official visit that number one overall consensus player when you do the industry rankings or the consensus rankings where you combine all the rankings together. So uh, it's as big as it gets. And, you know, they, they, they got him on campus, and, and that's a victory in itself. I think now is can, can they – survive this gauntlet he's going to take and stay on his mind that they do enough to at least uh, stay on his mind. I'm going to be in Nashville um, the last week in May for the on three elite series event, and he's going to be there. So I'll get a chance to interview David Sanders huh. a little bit more as well for the site uh, later this month, but he's got Ohio state, Alabama, Clemson, Tennessee, Georgia. Uh, he's got a long list of visits that are going to take place from May 31st weekend all the way until the final weekend in late June before the dead period. And regarding him, Sean, now again, I think fans probably don't believe they have a great chance to get him. That's just it's the fact you have those other big teams. But if they were to somehow land a player like this, does this change your, your thoughts in terms of how Nebraska can land big-time players going forward? Five stars, you know, not all the time, but sometimes. Well, the conversation is NIL-driven, too. I mean, to get a player like this now today, this is not like signing Marlon Lucky as a five-star running back in 2005. I mean, there's an NIL element mm. um, to this as well. Um, you know, you, you know, think about Indomitian and Sue. He was a near five star guy in 05. And, you know, now if he was coming out, can you imagine the NIL piece to it? Yeah. Um, so I, I think not only do you have to be a program that gets the player's attention, you also have to pass, as I joked on our show, the credit check. You have to be able to pay the bill yeah. um, to get a player uh, of this caliber. And Nebraska's in that position uh, with, with what they have. But, you know, everyone else that's recruiting will be a two. So that's the other part. I mean, when you get to a player like David Sanders, there's there's representatives and agents and people around him helping him. Um, so there's a lot that goes into a discussion. It's not just being a good fit that he likes to be at. There's more. There's a lot more things in play now today that weren't in play even five years ago in recruiting. Let's stand the recruiting jag, Sean. Nebraska, Nebraska got a quarterback, a four-star quarterback, T.J. Latif. T.J. Latif, significance to you? What's the significance? Well, you know, they really only identified two quarterbacks, in my opinion, over this 2025 recruiting process very early on last summer 
Alex Mansky was a guy that they really circled in on. Um, but then when Dylan Raiola committed um, back in December, you know, he, he kind of had a foot out the door at that point. And then he committed to Iowa State where he, you know, it, he's one of the top players in Iowa. He's right by Ames, Iowa. Algona. From that point, from that point on, um, the, the, the focus became Latif. They offered Latif. And, you know, he is the, he was their guy, the four star out of California. And, you know, when you can, when you can do that, but that's what you want to see. I mean, they, they weren't just making, you know, quarterback recruiting is not going great sometimes when you see a school just having to throw new offers out in May. Mm. That usually says that, hey, they, they've mm. missed out on the guys they want. Latif was the only quarterback they brought on campus in 2024. Um, he was the only guy that they offered and really showed attention to. So, uh, that's a big success to get him. They brought him in for the spring game weekend. It took about a month for him to kind of process that before he made that commitment on Mother's Day. So, but, yeah, big piece to this recruiting class because um, he really is the first national guy they've added. I mean, everybody else in this class, for the most part, are Nebraska, Kansas, and Colorado kids, and then Bear Tinney is from uh, Utah. And this is and this is Glenn Thomas all the way, right? Right, yeah, Nebraska's new quarterback coach led the way on the teeth, and you know this was the guy he, he, he went went after. So you talk about what's his role in the quarterback coach. I mean, he he was able to get them Latif and and bring him into this class. Sean Matt Rule is ranked 29th in the CBS. I I don't know, Sean. I don't think you're big on these things. You know I am. I I, I love coaches ratings any ratings that come out this time of year list ratings i'm all in um it puts in perspective a lot of different things do you see rule at 29th is about right ish i mean it's such a complicated discussion because oh boy i i still think you have to weigh what he did at temple <laughs> and baylor and to me that was better than that's better than 29th coaching okay um to you know, he had college game day at a, at a Temple game against Notre Dame and took Baylor to a Big 12 championship game um, after they were, you know, going through major NCAA things when he took over that job. So, you know, I, I think so much of it is based on what happened the year before. Um, and so if they do this list next year, Nebraska has a good year this year. Mm-hmm. It changes quite a bit. Yeah. So they're, they're just fun off-season fodder pieces to get guys like you on the radio through the month of May. I mean, that's how I look at it. So. Yeah, but there, if you read the list, though, Sean, I'm going to defend it a little bit. It's pretty interesting. Like, if you read through the names and what guys are doing, it's it's a worthwhile exercise. I'm just they're just saying. so different. I mean, there's you know, it's one man's list, and, you know, yeah. there, 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 there could be ten more of these that come out, and they're all going to be a lot different. True. Sean, always good stuff. Thanks for the time. We'll chat with you again next week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Muscarillon, Sean Callahan.